Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1292. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a great 2024, because there's lots of different things that you can do to get your financial house in order. And I like to do it right around the first part of the year. Now, it doesn't have to be done exactly on the new year, but I do like to do it either toward the end of the year or toward the first part of the year. And actually, I've already done this for myself. So now I'm going to tell you what I do so that you can take the same steps to prepare for a great 2024. So one of the things that you want to do is basically take an inventory of all of your assets. Now we're going to do this by having you calculate your net worth, but we're also going to, in general, go over some of the different categories of assets that you own. So first of all, with your net worth, this is a really good way to just take a snapshot of all of your assets and all of your liabilities and come up with what your net worth is. By doing that, every year you can see whether you're improving your net worth or not improving your net worth. If you're making good financial decisions, your net worth should be improving. But we always have those times like the pandemic or times when you lose a job or you have health issues or you go through a traumatic situation like a divorce or a death or even have a positive thing happen like a birth of a new child or moving to a new home. There's all kinds of changes and things that happen during life. And this is just a good way to keep track of what's going on in your financial life. And what you want to do to calculate your net worth is just to add up all of your assets, like your house or houses, your real estate, your cars, your investments, your stocks, your bonds, your pensions, your 401ks, your IRAs, your 403bs, your SEP, your savings accounts, your CDs, your checking account, your business value, your silver and gold coins, your jewelry, your furniture, and your crypto. Now, you can't overestimate the value of some of these things. You don't want to put the value of what you paid for your car, for example, because the day you drive your car off the lot, if it's a new car, it goes down in value by quite a bit. So you have to put what would be the resale value of your car or the resale value of your home or your furnishings or your jewelry. So you are putting conservative values on these assets. You're not recording them at the price you paid for them. You're recording them at what you could get for them if you had to sell them. So then add up all of your assets and that gives you your total assets. Now you want to look at all of your debt, like your mortgage, car loan, credit cards, business loan, student loans, etc. Any kind of debt that you have, and including private debt, if you owe your parents some money, for example, you want to include that debt, and total up all of your debt, that's your total liabilities, then subtract your total liabilities from your total assets, and that gives you your net worth. Now, the way that your net worth works is you can increase your net worth two ways. You can increase your net worth by your assets going up in value or acquiring more assets, or you can increase your net worth by decreasing your liabilities. So if you pay off debt, that's going to increase your net worth. So from my book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress on page 161, I make this point. I say, you can increase your net worth by adding assets that can substantially increase in value long-term, such as real estate, stocks, art, or a business. The other way to increase your net worth is to pay off any debt. Either one of those actions will increase your net worth. So that's the first thing you wanna do because your net worth gives you a baseline. And that baseline, once you have it for this year, you can look back at last year's net worth and the year before and 
10 years ago if you do it every year like I do and have done it for a long time. So you can see how you're making progress over the years. So that's the first thing that I recommend you do to have a great 2024 is just get a snapshot of your net worth and where you're starting from. If your net worth has gone down from last year, look at why it's gone down and see if there's anything you can do to improve it. Did you get into more debt this year? What were the reasons? Is there something you can do to reduce that debt? And what is your plan? And if you had a better year this year and your net worth is better, your net worth has increased, then pat yourself on the back. We had a horrible bear market in 2022 and many accounts still haven't quite recovered from that bear market, even though the S&P has gone on to new highs. And that's perfectly normal. It may take a while for what happened during the bear market to catch back up again. But the good news is we're getting there. But the good news is the markets have recovered very well and are continuing to move forward and things are looking good for the future especially with interest rates coming down and the Fed basically saying they're done raising rates and they're going to have to start easing next year. That's going to bring asset values back up. That should help values improve like stocks, bonds, real estate, and cryptocurrencies. So once you've calculated your net worth, you want to look at your asset allocation and see how your assets are invested. Do you have too much invested in any one asset class? Do you need to balance it out a bit? Do you have too much sitting in cash and not enough invested in the market and taking advantage of the extreme bull market that we've had since the bear market lows in October of 2021? The next thing you want to do is check all of your beneficiaries. Check your beneficiaries on your retirement plans, your IRAs, your 401k, all of your brokerage statements. Check your insurance policies. Check your annuities. Check your beneficiaries for all of those investments and make sure that the person you want to receive them, if something happens to you, is the correct person. You likely don't want to have your ex-spouse be your beneficiary. So make sure you've changed that person and it's the correct beneficiary that you want to receive your assets. Next, do an inventory of your crypto wallets. Make sure your crypto is off exchanges, stored away in cold wallets. Make sure you have your seed phrases copied and duplicate and stored away securely and that you have multiple wallets so you don't have everything just on one wallet if you have significant crypto assets. Now, I don't really often talk about debt on, on the podcast, and that's because we have a certain way that I recommend that you pay your debt off. And it's not the debt snowball. That's the worst way to pay off your debt, in my opinion, because it's the most expensive way to pay off your debt. It ignores the cost of the interest that you're being charged per credit card. And it has you just pay the smallest amount first, which also delays you getting better credit scores. My method is called the debt diamond. And if you want to learn my method of paying off your interest, which pays it off cheaper because you're paying off your most expensive debt first, so you're saving the most money, and it also raises your credit score faster because you're partially paying off each account. But rather than go into my method here, go listen to podcast number 430, 430. It's called the Debt Diamond Method for Paying Off Debt. And you'll learn how you can improve your credit score the fastest and pay the least amount in interest while paying off your debt. And finally, you want to check your mindset. Step one to building wealth is creating a wealthy mindset. I truly believe that. And these days, people are kept in fear through mass media constantly coming at you with fearful topics and fearful ideas and negative things that you see on television, in movies, in commercials, and on the internet. This year, I want you to sit down and think about what do you really want? If you want to be wealthy, what amount of wealth do you want? What amount of income do you want? What improvements do you want to make in your net worth? You see, many people just never decide. They don't really think about what it is they truly want. And what happens is they are driven by fear and they're constantly focused on what they don't have and what things can go wrong and all of the negative things that can happen rather than thinking about the positive things 
and the things that they want and the things that they already have. So really think about what is it that you really, really want. Not some pie in the sky thing that you wish would happen that you don't really believe is gonna happen. But what do you truly in your heart really want for yourself and your family? This is where you really wanna focus. And I find that writing down your future self where you're gonna be in two years and writing it in your notes on your iPhone or your Android is a great way to keep track of what it is you truly want. And somehow putting it into cyberspace seems to me to speed up the process of receiving it more than putting it on paper does. I can't explain why, but I can just say that's my experience with it. So use your notes pad on your phone. So those are the things that are gonna set you up for a great 2024. You wanna calculate your net worth, take that snapshot of where you are and what's going on, take an evaluation of your stocks, your bonds, your asset allocation, look at all of your beneficiaries, do an audit of all of your beneficiaries, look at your crypto wallets, make sure that your cryptocurrencies are tucked away securely, pay off any debt using my debt diamond method, which will pay it off faster, cheaper, and increase your credit score at the same time, and choose what it is you really want with your mindset. This is gonna set you up for a really strong 2024. And if you wanna go one step beyond that, come in to the Be Wealthy and Smart VIP experience. This is the last week that we're holding the price at last year's prices. So if this has been something you wanna do, you wanna come in, you pay once, and you have lifetime membership. You're investing alongside of a group of awesome investors for years to come. If you want to know more, go to my website at lindapjones.com and there's details on the Be Wealthy and Smart VIP experience in the top right hand part of the page. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.